Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, as well as the next video, we're going to learn how to find the stable matrix when we have an absorbing Markov chain. So again, an absorbing Markov chain has a transition matrix where we have a column that has a one and nothing but zeros for the other elements and which eventually will result in one of the states having all of the population and the other states having none of the population. Sometimes you can have all of the population between two states and none of them in the other states, but in this case we're going to have one uh, state with all the population and none in the others. So that the stable matrix will look like this and the stable distribution matrix will look like this. Now, we can calculate the stable matrix by simply taking the matrix and multiplying by itself n number of times, n being a very large number, and of course that's a lot of work, or we can write the matrix, the, the transition matrix, in standard form, where we have the one and the zeros in the first column with the one on top right there. And when we do that, we can see that in the upper left corner we'll have what we call the identity matrix. Now in this case there's only one in here, but you'll see where, what we're going to use there later. Then on top here we have what we call the S matrix, down here we have what we call the zero matrix, and here we have what we call the R matrix. Now the S and R don't have any specific meaning at this point, they're just indicating the regions here on the matrix. Then, when we go ahead and look at that, let's go ahead and put this matrix in there to see what it looks like. So when we put our transition matrix in there, we get a 1, a 0 0.4, a 0 0.3, 0, 0, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and a 0 0.2 and a 0 0.5, like so. Notice when we we'll put the lines in here, and we'll put the lines in there, then this becomes what we call the identity matrix, this is the zero matrix, this is the S matrix, and this is the R matrix. Now, how do we find the stable transition matrix? Well, we find the stable transition matrix by saying that P is equal to, notice this here, again we have to delineate it like this, and delineate it like that, so what we're going to get here is the identity matrix. Here we get the zero matrix. Here we'll get the zero matrix. And over here we get the matrix where we get S multiplied times the identity matrix minus the R matrix and take the inverse of that. Now that's kind of a small one. Let me rewrite that so it should be a little bit bigger so you can see it like that. So what we're going to do is these will become all zeros. There will still be the identity matrix. And on here what we'll get we'll get the identity matrix minus the R matrix, so it's this matrix minus the R matrix. We then take the inverse of that, and then we multiply it times the S matrix, and that will be the values that we get over there. And that's how we find the stable matrix. Now, you may say, wow, that looks kind of weird. How do I do that? Well, that's what the next video is going to be for. We're going to take this matrix, and we're going to calculate what this is equal to. And of course, in the end, if this is indeed an, absorb of Mar an absorbing Markov chain, you realize that this will simply become equal to 1 and 1. And so I'll show you how that happens. If this does not become 1 and 1, then we know we don't have an absorbing Markov chain. All right, so that's how we do that. Now you may say also, well, how can I subtract the R matrix from the I matrix? Because the I matrix just has a single element in it, and the R matrix has a, is a 2 by 2. Well, what that means is we're going to take this I and make it into a 2 by 2 identity matrix so we can actually subtract these four elements as a 2 by 2 matrix from the four elements of a 2 by 2 identity matrix to make it work. And I'll show you that how to do that in the example. So that's how we find the stable matrix. And so stay tuned to show, so I can show you how to actually go through the mathematics of accomplishing that.